Shinso wasn't expecting this for a late Saturday morning. What was originally him running a quick errand to purchase some cat food instead turned into him running into you, balancing an overwhelmingly large bouquet of flowers in your arms. The impact of the collision wasn't hard, but you were already struggling to keep your balance that the light collision was enough to knock you off your feet. So, here he was, arms around you in an awkward position, preventing you from slipping anymore. Are you alright? Shinso muttered, unmoving until he was sure you weren't going to fall the moment he let go. He didn't realize that he had unintentionally pulled you closer until he felt you awkwardly lay your hands on his chest. Yeah, thank you. Your words of gratitude were quickly cut off as your eyes traveled from Shinso's face to his feet. He saw them widen in distress and he followed your gaze curiously, his own lavender eyes widening when he realized he had accidentally stepped on the now squashed bouquet on the pavement. He must have stepped on them in the middle of trying to stop you from falling. Fantastic. No, Mr. Psycho was expecting these at 11 sharp. You sounded so dejected that it made Shinso feel bad. He watched from the corner of his eye as you combed your fingers through your hair, beginning to mutter to yourself as you bite your thumb. This was his chance to finally reconcile with his wife after all these weeks, but now that I'm going to be late with my delivery, I won't be able to get the flowers to their apartment in time for their anniversary. If I don't get there, Mr. Psycho's wife is going to think he doesn't love her anymore. I'm going to be the reason they split. I'll never forgive myself for this. I- Without thinking, Shinso grabbed you by your shoulders, shocking you from your muttering daze. For some reason, your blabbering reminded him of a certain broccoli-haired student. His mouth opened and closed, trying to find words to potentially make the situation more bearable for him. He cleared his throat, clumsily lifting his foot from the crushed flower bundle and letting his hands fall back to his sides. Look, I'm sorry for stepping on your flowers, Shinso began hesitantly. Is there any way I can repay you? He almost regretted asking that question. For the second that followed, he was being dragged by the wrist down the street. He was surprised, trying to yank his wrist from your grip, completely overestimating your strength when he couldn't slip from your grasp. Got a little under 20 minutes to set up another order of flowers for Mr. Psycho. And with your help, I should be able to finish them with 5 minutes to spare to get to his apartment if I sprint. Again, you began to mutter to Shinso, staring at your watch as you speedwalk to who knows where. Shinso could have easily used his quirk to escape this little predicament, but he thought that he wouldn't be able to get your attention with all that incessant muttering. Instead, he let you drag him around like a dead weight, quietly waiting to get to your destination, wherever that was, and from there, decide whether or not his current situation was worth his time. A few blocks later, Shinso found himself in front of a floral shop located in the corner of a fairly busy street. It was a modest size compared to the other towering buildings and stores, but its size was made up by the vibrant flora displayed up front, making the shop stand out from the more muted palette washing over the district. He was quickly pulled in, the sweet chime of the bell above the door announcing their arrival. Shinso looked around. The shop appeared to be bigger on the inside filled with tables and shelves stocking different sized pots of bold colored flowers. His arm was quickly let go as he was busy marveling the acutely decorated shop and reveling in the sweet yet subtle aroma it brought. He wasn't sure if he had seen this much saturated color in one room before. He momentarily tore his eyes away to find you pacing around the room. Let's see, red chrysanthemum, some lily of the valley, along with some heliotrope and aster for a cool contrast, perhaps? You began to shuffle through several seed packets, wondering which flowers you should go for. Your head quickly whipped over to Shinso, startling him a little. Also, before you forget to ask, what's your name? After introducing himself and learning your name, Shinso asked, why not just go for red roses like you did before? Oh please, if you knew Mr. Psycho's wife, she would say that red roses were overrated. You sauntered over behind the counter. I was in such a panic earlier, I ended up forgetting about that. I guess it was good that you bumped into me when I was heaving those 88 roses. Thanks. You gave him a smile of gratitude before continuing to shuffle through the seed packets. Also, please do me a favor and fill those flower pots with soil. There's a trowel in the sack you can use. You pointed across the room at the several ceramic pots beside a half-full bag of garden soil. 
Shinso obliged, it being the least he could do after trampling on the previous bundle of flowers. You didn't seem like a threat to him. Maybe a threat to his sanity if you continued to mutter under your breath like that. He shoveled soil into each of the pots, patting it even when you came up beside him. With a polite thanks, you began to bury your chosen seeds in each of the pots, sweeping dirt over them. How do you plan to grow these in less than 10 minutes? Shinso asked, unaware of what you were doing as he looked over to you questioningly. You just giggled, facing the purple-haired man and lifting your hands, which was holding a once-empty pot, now blooming with crimson red flowers. Shinso was surprised. Well, it's my quirk. You cut him off with a chuckle. It allows me to quicken the growth speed of any plant, but only if seeds have already been planted. And if I'm feeling particularly healthy that day. Shinso raised his brows, mildly impressed. He stepped back. Hands dug in his pockets as you did the same with the rest of the flower pots, burying the seeds and growing them with just a simple touch of a finger. With five minutes to spare, Shinso watched as you finished trimming and bundling the flowers into an elegant bouquet of red, purple, and white, wrapping the flowers in decorative paper and finishing it off with a silk ribbon. You step back, hands on your hips as you sighed in satisfaction, eyes traveling to your watch. Shinso's eyes twinkled with amusement as the forest in front of him went into overdrive, cleaning everything up with muttered curses about them being late. Just as you could make it out the door, bouquet in hand, it swung open to reveal a man, hair disheveled and clearly in a rush. Mr. Psycho! Your voice rang out in surprise before rechecking your watch and bowing deeply. It's, it's not even 11 yet, but I'm so sorry I wasn't able to make it to your apartment before then. The man who was apparently the client in question let out a breathy chuckle, hands sweeping to brush hair from his face. <laughs> it's alright. There was a change of plans. I'll be picking Sarah up from her early shift and we're going out for lunch. Do you have the flowers ready? The man's gaze fell to the bundle in the florist's arms, eyes gleaming happily as the bouquet was handed to him. These are perfect! I'm glad you remembered chrysanthemums were Sarah's favorite. Shinzo could see sweat visibly form on the florist's forehead as you ruffled your hair sheepishly, an almost embarrassed smile on your lips. Of, of course I did! With a small string of words wishy like psycho luck, you waved the man goodbye before closing the door, leaning your back against it and sliding down with a heavy sigh of relief. Silence enveloped you two for a while, until Shinso let out a small chuckle. What? The florist looked up at him. Shinso coughed in his fist, shaking his head slightly. <clears throat> Aren't things usually that hectic? I couldn't imagine you rushing to get multiple orders done and delivering them when you're the only one working here. He said. You shook your head. I'm not the only one. You just caught the shop at a bad time. I have a co-worker who helps out in the shop and another who does the deliveries. Both called in sick today, though. Shinso hummed. Well, he started, getting off the ground and stretching, appearing much calmer. Thanks for dealing with my panic rush there, and thanks for helping out as well. Is there anything I can do for you in payment? Some flowers, perhaps? You offered jokingly. Shinso looked up and thought. He wasn't exactly the type to purchase or even have flowers on his person, never mind his living space. But then again, he thought it would be a nice change, something colorful to usually light up his bleak room. His thoughts continued to wander. I originally came out to buy some cat food since I ran out this morning. Shinso mumbled mainly to himself, unaware of the sudden shining eyes that watched him. But I guess I wouldn't mind a flower or two. You have a cat? Your voice had a sweet ring to it, excited eyes gleaming and awaiting his response. Shinso nodded, a little taken aback at your sudden outburst. What kind of cat? What's its name? Yoru. He's a Bombay. You clapped your hands happily, already gushing at the thought of the mentioned feline. What brand does he usually eat? I wouldn't mind giving you some, no payment necessary. You asked, making Shinso look at you quizzically. My baby is a very picky eater, so I usually have several brands on hand just in case. With a raised brow, Shinso told you the specific brand he needed. You really didn't have to do this. He would be totally fine just going down to the store and buying them himself. But on the other hand, he wouldn't mind saving a couple extra bucks. I'm assuming you have a cat of your own then, he said after a brief silence, tilting his head slightly. You nodded, ruffling through the bottom cabinets behind the counter before pulling out several bags of the familiar brand of cat food. What kind? A drama queen. An attention whore who screams if you don't give her her daily dose of head pats, can't get very clingy if you do end up petting her. You responded without missing a beat, 
beginning to list off the pet peeves with a lighthearted smile. But if you really have to know, she's a Dailu Calico. A pretty kitty, but still capable of being an asshole. This made Shinzo chuckle. And when do I get to meet this drama queen of yours? As if it knew it was the topic of conversation, the feline in question waltzed in with a meow, climbing to the top of the counter and butting its head against its owner with a slight purr, desperate for attention. Speak of the problem, child. You sighed, hands lazily trailing across the cat's back. Can me? Sweetness my ass. The meaning of your name speaks lies sometimes, little brat. Despite the light insults, your eyes showed nothing but love for the little feline as your fingers gently scratched behind the cat's ears. Shinso thought it was kind of cute. The feline suddenly sauntered over to him the moment she noticed his presence, sniffing his outstretched hand before immediately throwing herself onto him, mildly surprising him, but nevertheless, bringing a smile to his face. Hello, kitten. He cooed, scratching the cat's chin as he cradled her like a baby. You couldn't help but smile at the sweet interaction, a hand traveling to your lips as you suppressed a giggle. <laughs> Damn, Shinso. You chirped. I'm almost jealous. Shinso smirked playfully. Why? Do you want me to call you kitten too? He meant it as a joke, but his smirk faltered a little once he noticed the slight tinge of pink on your cheeks. It wasn't that you hated the name per se. Hell, you kind of liked it. But Shinso didn't have to know that. You just met the guy for crying out loud. No, I was hoping for some chin scratches myself, you jested, making Shinso chuckle. A small smile was finding its way to your face, and you couldn't help it. Despite his half-lidded eyes, dark circles, and lion's mane of indigo hair, Shinso didn't seem like such a bad guy. Also, considering the fact that your cat child just willingly threw herself at him, which was something she rarely did to strangers, only going so far as to rub her head against them as a first greeting. Shinso must be an exception. You two spent the next few minutes talking about your cats, flowers, and generally getting to know each other better. You really enjoyed Shinso's company. Even though he didn't speak much, he still showed signs of being a good listener. You were in the middle of a conversation about his quirk and how he wanted to be in the heroes department in UA when you heard the bell above the door chime. You looked over Shinso's shoulder and recognized the multiple faces of your friend group, waving at you with cheerful smiles. Hey! You greeted them with a wave of your own. Shinso backed off, your cat still in his arms as he quietly excused himself from the conversation to let you talk with your friends. He stood idly by, occasionally running his fingers through the calico's fur as he took a few steps around the shop. He looked out the window, the afternoon sun slowly reaching its peak in the sky as the streets were beginning to fill with sauntering pedestrians looking to enjoy the start of the weekend. Shinso thought it was about time that he left before the streets got too crowded as much as he didn't want to. He had grown accustomed to the color and vibrancy of the flower shop and the florist that currently resided in it. With a sigh, Shinso bent down to let the cat go, much to the feline's evident dismay, letting out a loud wail as it desperately tried to cling onto him. The cry of your child caught your attention from your friends, turning back to Shinso who was about to leave. Wait! You called to him, causing the man to turn around to face you. An idea popped in your head as you began to shuffle through more seed packets, choosing one and quickly tearing it open and burying the seeds in a nearby flower pot. Shinso watched you trim the newly bloomed roses before wrapping it with deep blue paper and securing the bouquet with a yellow ribbon. You jumped up to him with a smile, holding the bouquet out for him to take, along with the cat food which you had neatly placed in a bag. Mr. Psycho's wife may think roses are overrated, but I hope you like them. You bounced on the balls of your feet as Shinso took the bag and flowers in his arms. The bright yellow petals of the roses complemented the cool indigo of his hair. You wondered what the flowers would look like weaved into a crown and sat upon his head. Shinso took notice of the small cards strung around the ribbon, taking the piece of cardstock between his fingers. Yellow rose. Friendship, prosperity, and new beginnings. It read in fancy cursive. He looked up at you, a brow raised questioningly. You shrugged. Flower language plays a big part in each bouquet I design. You slipped another card from the pocket of your apron and handed it to him. The card had the name of the flower shop printed in bold calligraphy along with a phone number written just below it. Below the phone number was another set of numbers scribbled neatly in red ink, which Shinso assumed was your personal phone. So don't be shocked when I start speaking to you in flower. 
He couldn't help but let out a small laugh. <laughs> Are you hinting that you'll be giving me more? That depends if I'll be seeing you more often, Mr. Shinso. You gave him a playful wink, tucking your hands behind your back. Shinso shook his head, slipping the card into his pocket and cradling the bouquet comfortably in his arms. He made his way to the door, swinging it open. He turned and gave you a mock salute, the corners of his lips tugging up to a smirk. I'll be looking forward to it, kitten. <clears throat> My tea. Here we go again. Okay. Trying to find words to potentially make the situation. He cleared his throat. I cleared my throat. He cleared his throat, clumsily lifting his foot from the cup. Why can't I read today? And with your help, I should be able to finish them with thick. Thick. Filled with tables and shelves stocking different sized pots of bold color. Oh, please. What? Also, considering the fact that your cat child just- Shinso watched you trim the newly bloomed roses before wrapping it with deep blue paper and securing the bow- Yeah, I was on the right track, god dang it. Before wrapping it with deep blue paper and securing the bouquet with a re- Why am I having so much trouble reading today? Then you're left in the dust, and this is stuck by you. You're the sunflower. I think you'll never be too much You'll be left in the dust I stuck by you You're the sunflower You're the sunflower